All right, it's all yours. Awesome. Hello, guys. <laughs> Welcome. All right, what's up, Vegas? Thank you for tuning in to Goki D D TV on Anime Revolution. We are just chilling out. I hope you guys had a really awesome Force Friday. <laughs> I myself had a pretty good one. We got this really cool Kylo and Rey figure myself. And um, <laughs> if they discuss anything about how exclusive the, stu the things are over at your local Target or Walmart, don't get too upset about it if you miss any because they're not going to be that exclusive once the movie comes out. I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah, we're excited for Rogue One as it oh, is already. I mean, yeah. it's going to be freaking beautiful. Oh, yeah, no, I'm super yeah, stoked with how they're going to do the movie and everything. But, no, welcome to our show. We are wanting to make this a uh, usually a weekly show where we discuss current uh, topics, whether it's through anime, through gaming, through nerd culture. You know, what we, we, we want to discuss, you know, we also take suggestions. So if during the week you guys are want to, mm -hmm. send us some messages, tweet us out, uh, suggestions you want to hear on the show, what questions, and we'll be happy enough to talk about them. Definitely. But uh, as of right so. now, we're going to pick up some topics we've already discussed. Uh, starting off with our first topic, the announcement for uh, One Punch Man Season 2. That's actually come out as a really big shock because for the past year or since last uh, October or December... There was way too many rumors about how, one, it's either never going to happen or Madhouse is just going to pull that thing where it's going to be like, eh, you know, we'll give you a first season and then movie. Yeah, or, or it's going to get the no game, no life treatment where it did so well and it's like, well, no, we're not going to do anything else with it. But, you know, it's so far from what I've heard and what I've read up on it, um, they're talking about it to be a 19-episode uh, anime instead of being back where it was 12 episodes. That already sounds concerning that it yeah. was originally going to be a 12-episode series, really? Yeah, but I think they're going to be covering a lot more in this one because they've already talked about that uh, it's going to be starring uh, three of so-called uh, Saitama's nemesis, quote-unquote. Um, Boros... Gamoy, I think his name was, and sub it, there were three of them. Yeah, the so it's, it's interesting, you know, I, I want to see this show get a second season, because I did enjoy it for 12 episodes, it had great Definitely, animation. Definitely, it really did. And had really likable characters, but I am afraid myself currently is that I don't want this to be turning into an Attack on Titan, like, thing to happen, where it's like we get so hyped for it to be a second season, and it keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed, and we still don't know when it's going to happen. So so far, there has been no announcement exactly when this uh, second season is going to be coming out. I see how that is, and for the moment, it really is to be announced. But if it does get delayed, um, I really don't think that that's much of a worry. I mean, I actually I tend to get really really happy when I hear that things are being delayed. If they're being delayed. You can really hope that they're actually making improvements, and they're yeah. going to tweak a few things up for the better. And if that is the case, good for them. But if they're going to be taking up all that time to just really not make so many good innovations for, it, then I'm just going to be like, "Come on, guys! You had you had this much you had this many chance to do it. Come on!" It, it, it really depends. Me on, over. It really depends on what the finished product is going to be, like how much time they put into it. But hopefully, we can look at that. Yep. You know, one point fan season two will live up to the hype, and we'll love it like as much as we did the first season. You know. I mean, the only kind of you know. We only get that kind of disappointment when it came to No Man's Sky, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, on to our second uh, su uh, subject, and it's a very popular movie so far in Japan right now. Um, in the English translation of the title, it is uh, A Silent Voice, or um, I don't know how you pronounce it. In Koe Japanese. no Katachi. Yes, um, so far, this movie, in its first week of showing, has gone over in, well, yen, 1 billion yen, or in American uh, U.S. currency, of uh, $10 million in just a week. I think more than that. I, I heard the numbers 14 million or something like that. But so far, I mean, from what I've seen, just from trailers alone, the movie looks very interesting. If uh, you haven't heard about the concept, the so far from what I've understood, the concept revolves around this boy and this girl uh, going to the same school. The boy, uh, basically our main character right here, uh, when he was a kid, uh, she was a new student that came in. Uh, she is, uh, she's deaf. If I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And while, well, of course, being kids in school, he personally didn't really understood that and mm -hmm. basically picked on her for, well, I think going on to a couple weeks or so. So it got to the point where she actually uh, had to leave that school. Mm -hmm. And later on... This part of the trailer really... Yeah. Really hit me hard. Yeah, no, it's... Um, oh. Then later on, they beam back up in, uh, later in high school, and he wants to return saying that he apologized for the way he acted, and then I think he starts realizing uh, feelings that she has for him. And of course, uh, he's also, ever since then, kind of looked at the negative life because he was the one that did pick on her uh, as a child, and of course, a lot of I people mean, turned it, on him. I mean, it, it really is touching a very, very... 
high sensitive topic, but I think that this needs to be shown. I mean, it, I mean, it, it looks really amazing. It's, it's. I think it's a good movie. We need like animated. I think yeah. an animation wise looks beautiful. Yeah. And plus, way- you know, it comes from a studio that I really can trust. You know. Kyoto Animation, the great guys behind The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, and Full Metal Panic. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Canon. Oh, and Canon, yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I hopefully this movie will sometime sooner or later actually come out to America so we can actually see it. I would love to see this movie in theaters. But oh, my. Yeah. I think with how popular it is in Japan right now and how interesting, I think it's probably going to get an American release. Hopefully sometime in early or so next year, I would hope so. Mm. I can probably see later next year, but whatever the case, if it does come even even next year for you know any reason, that'd be just be amazing. Seriously, I just I just I'm, not, I'm just looking at the trailer. I love the music of it. I love how the yeah. characters, like even the voice actors in Japanese, just do the characters so well. Like <laughs> it's it's so interesting. And I, just, I mean, there is there is intensity. There's heartfelt. Real there's intensity. It, it, this movie is going to make you feel. Like this movie will probably make you cry. Honestly, uh, what what makes me happy about it is that if this manga series was made into an end, was made into a series rather than a movie, I feel like it would dilute the intensity. I honestly yeah. do feel that. You you want to be on the emo like on the emotion roller coaster like keeps going instead of being like one episode stop. No, you want to keep going for the whole ride. Exactly. That's how you get the whole experience, which I agree with you that it's yeah. a movie adaptation would is going to do is really well. And for the fact of it, just making that much money and making that much profit on the first, like, literal week of its release is is a- astonishing. It's really amazing. And what also tells me is that I know a lot of stuff when it comes to animation and, and anime that, you know, you think that, oh, it's only, like, kids' films. But a lot of times when it comes to animation, especially we've seen with Studio Ghibli, is that you put enough work into it. The public recognizes it. It does. That's uh, a good movie, and that's a good way of watching something. That doesn't. It doesn't matter that it is anime. You can still watch it because it's a great story to it. I mean, it is kind of funny how when Miyazaki did his films, he did intend them, intend for them to be for kids, but he was touching subjects that were universal mm-hmm. to you know to to mankind. It was crazy. Yeah. And I mean that. And I mean it hits the exact same area. Yeah, so oh, yeah, I see it. if you guys want to know more, more information about it, go check it out. There's probably YouTube videos of trailers. There's uh, some there's some dialogue that's translated um, so far. I'm not 100% sure how trustworthy it is, but definitely recommend watching trailers for this movie, guys. It looks definitely interesting. I mean, it looks amazing. And uh, so on to our next, we're going to our uh, gaming topics side right now. Um, a quick note before we get on to a full PlayStation uh, going on. Uh, we've heard reports and read reports that um, the director of No Man's Sky is getting um, investigated by, I believe it's the... False advertisement. Fa- well, they're being investigated for false advertisement. They are. And um, Which know, is the most believable thing I've heard about them so far. Yes. <laughs> like, to me, I think they definitely need to get some penalty because I think it's time... It in the, in the whole video game markets we've gone through, we've been lied to so many times with these games that our money is basically being taken. And to me, publishers and directors need to be punished for something they're not promising. Here's the thing. I perfectly understand if people want to support a certain game for what it can be. But for what it is, amounts to nothing. I'm sorry, but we are being charged... Triple A, uh, you know, a triple A price for this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even go for a a one A price, if you ask me. I mean, if this was fifteen dollars or even twenty dollars, I probably would be more forgiving about it. But the thing is that even then, I can't really treat it as like a relaxing game or something that just has a lot of atmosphere. It has good atmosphere, but the thing is, the gameplay is just it's clunky. It's 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 it's, it's missing so many of the core mechanics that we were promised, but especially for people who pre-ordered it and <laughs> promises before release that. This game and a lot of other games that it's it's like imagine before the game released, um, No Man's Sky for like the past two years going had was getting so many reward nominations for this game was gonna be the best game for E3 all time. This was gonna be the best game of the year, and then when the game finally released, all of that dropped because the thing is though what was really weird is that they were not giving out review copies for reviewers to actually check out the game, and I think another reason why is because they knew that if they did. Then once reviewers came out with all what was wrong with it, they weren't going to do it. So that's why they said no, no review copies. But uh, what, what yeah. was what was bad for reviewers is that reviewers couldn't honestly, really honestly review this game because this game had really no no narrative. It had no objective. Like in most games nowadays, like Uncharted, even Call of Duty, and all of them, they have a somewhat story and and subjective. Even uh, even the indie game Journey, it's it does have some story and some plot. 
and the way you play it, you just glide on through it. Yeah. That's all you do. You but, walk across it, and it's just so ambient. Yeah, but it, it, was, it was, of course, Journey <laughs> was everything it was meant to be. It, it said, was. It didn't lie about anything the game was going to be. Especially no, no, no it was going to have multiplayer. So, <laughs> I mean, No Man's Sky doesn't offer any of that. And let's be real, if No Man's Sky did have multiplayer, oh my god, there would be so many server issues. I mean, if you... I mean, it doesn't matter how good your PC is. It doesn't matter how good your PC is. It will crash on you relentlessly. If you use a PC, God bless your soul, it will not... Well, it it's it's not even your problem with your computer. It's the actual <sighs> code of the game itself. It, it it's, is, yeah. It's, it's dumb. And I think the saddest experience I've actually had, a friend of mine, Cameron, um, he actually tried... How's he doing, by the way? Oh, he's doing great. He's doing great. Um, he tried to go... He called. He actually physically called PlayStation's uh, computer... Uh, I'm sorry, not computer. Uh, customer service. Uh, oh, I... Store, <laughs> wanting to return this game. He first talked to a person. He said, listen... This game is broken. I'm not satisfied with this game. Uh -huh. I want to return this game. And the guy's like, well, I don't know if we can do that because he... Because my friend Cameron, to back up his claim, he actually went onto the actual website and said if the game is broken or meets a certain demands, you can ask for a refund for the game. So the customer support uh, had to kind of direct him over to another branch, which was um, like a manager. And he kept saying that, listen, your website says if the game is broken, then I can return this, even though it was a digital release, uh, you know, digital it, game. That reminds me, there are two things, I'm not sure if these are 100% too true, don't hold them against me, but there are two rumors I heard. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a, you want to know how, how big the return rate of the, of, you know, how, like how many returns had to be made? 92% mm -hmm. of the audience. And a lot of that was on Steam. It was. And the worst, and the thing, I don't know if this other part is true, but this is what I heard from, I think, three. If they are returned, if you have a digital copy, or even just a physical copy, once you return it and you delete the game completely, you are apparently no longer allowed to play it ever, even if you mm -hmm. buy it back. I, I haven't really heard anything about I've that. I've heard that twice. I've, I've heard that twice. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that twice. I don't see how that could necessarily really be true with how how gaming programming could work on that. But, well, but to, to, but to finish my to finish my like story here, um, so we got directed to a manager, and Cameron was talking to the manager on the phone, saying the manager's like explaining, well, we really cannot return um, said broken game because you know it's not on our policy. And he's, he's explaining, but I'm looking on your website. And it does say right here in your policy, and she goes, "Well, are you looking at our U.S. website?" So apparently, so for apparently, we looked up this current this um, return policy on the U.K. website, and we went onto the U.S. website, and there was no PlayStation.UK. Yeah, but we went on the U.S. website. There was no article that says anything about returning for digital copies um, for, through PlayStation. And she goes, well, if it doesn't say in the U.S., we cannot return it. And right before she did finally hang up, we literally got her to say, though, she says, we cannot return broken games. If the game is broken, we still cannot return it. So if you bought the game on PlayStation and did not get a refund, you are sore out of luck for it being broken. <laughs> and, and She's probably saying in her head, let's be real. Let's... But, but looking at it from a cor like a corporate perspective for Sony, Sony doesn't want to lose their ass when it comes to this game. Like they don't want to lose all the money. So I'm pretty sure when it comes to PlayStation, they have to save their butts on making certain loopholes you have to get through and you can't return the game. Steam, however, was a lot different because Gavin does not worry about money because no. Gavin doesn't really care. But in the end, I think we put No Man's Sky on the chopping block for actually people to understand and companies mm. and game makers to understand you cannot lie to your audience. Just be truthful with the game. That's all you have to do. Past couple of years, Ubisoft has lied to us when it comes to a lot of games. They lied to us about Far Cry, um, The Division, a lot of Assassin's Creed games. It's and it's always the same excuse. Give it time to get better. Give it time to patch. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest pet peeve with gaming. Give us the full product on yes. day one. If you have Thank to hold you. it back, then just hold it back. But you know, that's I our... perfectly understand if you need to put away um, free DLC. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of DLC for it because the game is huge. Yeah. And my computer can run it fine. But that's the sense where I do understand it. Yeah. All right, so uh, now on to our gaming topic, and this is actually something really I'm personally excited for. I've been waiting for this. Um, you know how Definitely. how gaming has evolved into the whole VR aspect. We've gotten the Oculus Rift. We've gotten the uh, HTC 
Um, we also, I think, is it HTC that was a new one? Yes. Like the one that came out was like eight hundred dollars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, which I highly do not want to get that because literally you need an entire room for that. Like really? You, you need to get not only the headset, but you also need to put up sensors around your room, a specific space to actually be able to like stand a, up. What's, this mini what's the minimal range? Like uh, 10 by 10? No, it's, by it's, a very, it's a very uh, weird number. I don't have the current dimensions on me, but I know you uh. need a separate room to do, though. Hmm. Um, but no, we're here to talk about the PlayStation VR, which has been in the works for, I would say, uh, two, three years, I would say. Um, today, Maybe. they recently uh, brought out the PlayStation VR uh, unboxing kit which comes out in October uh, October 13th to actually precise and from what we can tell here very nice box I mean it looks really beautiful yeah, already the packaging looks good um, the headset I believe is going for three ninety nine, mm -hmm. and Lovely. all you need for the headset is that you just need to buy the headset and you need a PlayStation or PS4 uh, camera which I think mm -hmm. runs less than a hundred but besides that, that's all. Sixty nine ninety nine. Maybe I, I don't know the full price, but mm. literally that's all you need. And <laughs> how it works is the PlayStation uh, headset, from what I can tell from the video, is that it has uh, optimal cables. It has to, for vo volume control. It has HDMI in and out of for a box about the show up here, where you hook up the box to your TV, so people who are in your living room can see what you're seeing through the headsets. Yeah, so absolutely. if they're staying in the room, they can enjoy what you're seeing. On the TV, and I mean, probably can also, and probably they can probably also mess with you while you're <laughs> in the middle of that because this adapter also comes where you can plug in headphones to put into your ears with 3D optimal. Um, uh, 3D optimal audio, so you're actually experiencing the audio what you're looking through in the game. And so for far, a second, I thought that was like a, a super mini PS4. <laughs> yeah, it kind of looks like that, but no, that's the box they use for the HDMI in and out. So like I said, you plug it into your TV, plug one into your PS4. I like how they set that thing up. Really. Yeah, it also comes with cords and mm -hmm. uh, everything. I know some games on this are going to be using the PlayStation Move they released a couple, about a year or so back, which, mm. not too bad. I mean, I don't think it's uh, a necessity you might need, because the way I love how the PlayStation VR here is set up, whether all, this is also showing off some uh, games that are coming out with a demo disc Whoa, when you buy the VR. Yeah, some of these they were actually showing off at the PlayStation oh, Experience. <laughs> oh, wait, was that, uh, was that Shark Attack 2? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. They'll probably release the full game list that's going on in, with the disc. But to me, this the way the PlayStation VR is designed compared to the HTC and all that is that this game or the, the thing itself is designed for you to actually be sitting down. So you can That's experience good, all these games while sitting down. You don't have to be up and at them and be yeah, super exactly. like, you know, agile or anything. But to me, this looks like it's going to be so much fun. It really does. I mean... They're also letting you test out the VR at certain locations all around uh, the United States. So if you are interested in wanting to buy it, um, check around for your local GameStop. I'm sure they'll have some demos out there for people to try out the headsets. If I can find a demo, I will try. But, Definitely. Yeah, no, I, I'm super stoked. I want to get a headset, especially before Christmas, hopefully. Yeah. But I did hear that pre-orders for the headsets have almost actually just basically gone dry. Like, everyone's pre-ordered this thing. Already? Yeah. I can see. I mean, hopefully this doesn't go well. I've, I've always been a little bit intimidated by virtual reality, mostly for disorientation reasons, because I, I don't know if it's going to screw with my eyesight or anything like that. It depends, I think, on the programmers, because a lot of the games that were released, like for uh, Oculus or for, for the HTC, a lot of programmers were like beginner programmers, where they were making like I wouldn't say demo games, it's like a whole bunch mm -hmm. of them, but they were charging retail prices. I think yeah. with the PlayStation VR, since we're actually now on a console and not on a computer market, a lot of these developers are going to be releasing somewhat good quality content for the VR. I think gaming for the VR is a good market. I don't think it's necessarily going to take like, you know, uh, what's the word? It's going to uh, replace 2D gaming no, where you're actually staying no. on the couch playing it. No but I think VR is a good next step and I especially think PlayStation... For certain, most, I think it just depends on the games that you're playing because yeah. certain games I want to experience oh, in virtual reality. Yeah, like uh, Resident Evil 7. Oh my god. Resident Evil 7 in VR is going to look so that good. That would look amazing. I mean, even Alien Isolation, which I, which I play all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean... That w belongs for virtual reality, I mean, and funny thing, I did pull up an article um, just a couple of minutes ago on what games people want for virtual reality, and I had a, some, I want to get my two cents on if it pulls up correctly, one of them was Battlezone, a lot of people wanted Battlezone to, Battle be, uh, to be virtual reality, I okay. mean, 
I'll see about another thing was Batman Arkham, like a Batman Arkham game virtual they, reality. They are there is there is a thing they're they're actually working on Batman VR. Can you they did that? they did do some tests um, at certain conventions. I believe they did some at E3, uh, some over at um at other conventions, and mm. uh, not much has been talked about. But I heard that everyone is enjoying it. Mm. So I don't know what they're going to be able to do so much with the VR when it comes to Batman. It might be interesting. I mean, I can definitely see that being really well if you're in like a first-person view driving the Batmobile or some sh some shit like that. Yeah. But it, oh, can't... also in um in that uh, video, we we didn't actually hear the audio for that video, but the <laughs> but the actual PlayStation VR screen that's going to be showing is going to be an OLED. Mm screen oh, it? so it's gonna be a 1080 old screen right on your eyes so Ooh. it's gonna be really nice for the eyes so it's not like you're, that's gonna, good. Be, that's good you're not gonna be looking at some like like plasma screen looking yeah i don't need like, that i don't need yeah. that i've got bad eyesight as it is already but a few other things that you know we came across this you know everyone wants resident evil 7 on this obviously because mm -hmm. it would be just you know really really insane mm -hmm. uh headmaster i don't Hear too much about that Eve Valkyria. Now that actually sounds pretty. I did hear about that. They were testing it out with the uh, Oculus, but they might mm -hmm. do some more with that for PlayStation. Let me know what that goes. Uh, Farpoint, and of course, everyone wants Final Fantasy 15. They are uh, confirmed. There is going to be some VR. There's actually going to be a special segment where you're going to be able to do VR in that game. Yeah. Uh, where I also heard there's going to be a, a Sydney experience um, from Final Fantasy 15. So it's going to be pretty fun. But yeah. I, I just think with a lot you're going to be able to do with PlayStation, especially with the VR for PlayStation, is that it's it's going to be great. And they also did say that you don't you don't necessarily need a PlayStation 4 Pro to really yeah. like have to use this on the headset. Like the regular PlayStation 4 is going to work just fine. If you want something that might be more reliable and more faster in processing, then PlayStation 4 might Pro yeah. might be your thing. But it's not a necessity. You need that to run the VR headsets. And All in case anyone is curious. No, I do not think that the PS4 Pro has 4K. It it can it can actually stream out to 4K television. Oh, can it? It can, okay. but it has to be like I say, a 4K enabled television. If it's a regular, uh, like you know, um, yeah. 1080 HD uh, television, it'll stream just fine. It might be streaming better quality, but nothing compared to 4K. But 4K, yeah. yes, it can do that. Okay, that's good at least. As as I, I just know. say if you don't, if you haven't gotten a PS4 yet, at least you know. As of right now. They're already like, coming out with a PS4 Slim. Yeah, but if you want to actually get a new <laughs> PS4, I save it for the Pro. Because you're going to get yeah. a much better processor, much better for graphics and everything on, under the table. Uh, the only thing you're not going to get is the 4K Blu-rays. But that, yeah, that's, but the, honestly, yeah. with me, I don't. I just watch regular Blu-rays. Yeah, I don't. Course. I don't really need the 4K Blu-rays. Because I don't know a lot of people who, who watch 4K Blu-rays. I, mean, I don't that's either. Just me, but for me, I'm not buying the Pro just to try to get a 4K player. I just want no. I'm getting the Pro because I want much better. If you, if you want a 4K Blu-ray player, get an Xbox One S. That's really the only difference. One has a 4K Blu-ray player, yeah. and the other one doesn't. And <laughs> I don't know if that's a make or break thing for you, but you know what? You do with uh, your money what you want. I'm not going to judge you. Yeah, but one but one thing that I definitely saw for the VR was um this was on Facebook and I'm not too sure if this is going to happen but you know, it was a Star Wars virtual reality and the first thing you see, you see Vader turning around and then he ignites his lightsaber. I want to know what that is. So I, I don't know if they myself. might do an add-on with a uh, Star Wars Battlefront for there to be actually be VR either TIE fight, uh, VR um, like space flight or maybe oh, but lightsaber. I, <laughs> but I would love to play Rogue Squadron on on you know that yeah. kind of stuff. Well, I mean, I know I know that this is a myth, but please give me a you know you the want, actual you want like a, the a actual rebel Rogue a rebel helmet, helmet the VR rebel headset. helmet VR headset. I would just I would buy that even if it was twice the price of of, of a VR. Set. That's how you get that's how you get the Star Wars so, fans. Yeah. But yeah. they did say in the in the video there there is going to be at least a fifty game lineup by the end that's of true. the year of VR games. So well, I guess we'll just have to see what is going to be released and you know some new games, some new yeah, ideas. But um, besides that, uh, I think that's currently all I can think of right now for our first uh, weekly. Well, I think, yeah, show. I think, yeah, I think we already. Yeah, we got like three minutes to spare. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is our weekly show. We bring up anything related to gaming, to uh, nerd culture throughout the week. Um. Like I said, we do take suggestions in case you guys want to talk about certain topics, certain events that might have transpired. Uh, you can hit us up on Facebook, on Twitter, social media. We'll definitely listen to your guys' ideas. And if you guys really like the show, give us support. Let us know what we can, what we can work on. You know, we're, we're 
we're here for you guys. We're, we're, we're here to hear criticism. We're not perfect at this. We're still learning. <laughs> but we want to hear from criticism so we can actually improve. Yeah, we want to improve. We want, we want this show to be a weekly thing that you guys look forward to and just to have fun and hear us talk about stuff that's going on in the world and goofy antics and all that. So, But, uh, oh, it is, um, but we are still good for October, people coming in with their cuts? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, during October in our shop, uh, Anime Revolution, if you do come into our shop in literally full costume, we're not talking about you just wearing a t-shirt and say, I'm this. I mean, we want you, like, in full, at least put effort, like, put effort into it. Uh, you will get 10% off in your, on anything in the store, uh, negating from um, custom orders, because custom orders is something we do is separate but other than that uh 10 off in the shop so you guys got some really awesome outfits some cosplays costumes come on by show them off to us if we really do like them with your permission we would love to feature them all on our facebook page you know let everyone else see how awesome you look that'd be pretty sweet mm -hmm. and of course on halloween night we are playing on hanging out candy so if you guys are watching you got kids you got People you know who have kids, come on down, give them candy. Hopefully they won't be scared by our costumes. <laughs> yeah, but no, we're, we're excited for Halloween. So look forward to our social media for announcements, new products, um, big events planned. You know, we got, we're working on right now. So, but again, thank you guys so much for watching our weekly stream. We hope to see you thank back Thank you again. for joining us at Anime Revolution. Follow Goki TV on Twitch, and we will see you guys next time. Yeah, hope to see you guys next Friday. Catch you later.